Delight to have you joining us again for Curiosity Not Judgment. My name is Virga. And I'm Gary. And look at us in the same room. Uh, yeah, I know. It's been a while. Yes. Very glad to be back together. So we have a, a topic that I think is very timely for this time of year, being December on the approach to Christmas. But of course, it is applicable all year round, and that is really getting our eyes off of ourselves and onto others. It helps eliminate the stress. It helps take some of the pressure off-ish. We'll get to that to, in a minute. And all around just helps us to be more conscientious of the people that are in our sphere of influence and, and part of our lives. So I was at an event on over the course of the weekend where we had a, a table. We were passing out brochures and information on behalf of the organization that I'm working for. And I got the opportunity to sit with the executive director and she and I haven't had a ton of time together. And it was a perfect opportunity to just talk. And she started asking about you know, composition of, of what I'm about, kind of in that giant language about uh -huh. the, you know, pioneer, I know you can rattle off the five off the top of your head, guardian, uh, nurturer. nurturer. Now that you've done this. Oh, now I've uh, jinxed it. Uh, yeah. Nurturer, um, guardian, nurturer, pioneer, creative. Connector. And connector. Okay. So we were talking about those things and, and she had asked me what my, my, profile was and so I said well you know my latest time of taking this and it's shifted by the way over the years is I'm a I'm a guardian nurturer which is a whole other topic for another time but she said something to me she's like well guess what I am I said I guess you're a, a pioneer connector she's like that's exactly what I am and then she I'm proceeds proud of it. yeah but then she proceeds to get up and make sure everybody who has a display booth has a piece of pizza because she knows that they were hungry and they, they weren't having the opportunity to go get in line, make sure everybody had a cookie, started talking to families, helping them throw away trash, helping them move their stuff to tables. And she came back finally and sat down. I said, you're totally, totally <laughs> a nurturer. And she laughed a little bit and, and I just had to admire her. You know, she is a take charge, lead an organization kind of a personality. And I love that about her. But when she sees a need, she's willing to meet it. And I think that really is what the heart of this conversation is about is, are you seeing a need and being willing to meet it? Are you getting your eyes off of yourself and even your own strengths long enough to, to maybe walk in a way that's not your normal strength in order to accomplish something for someone else? Well, and I think the, the, the start of that is thinking of someone else. Mm -hmm. um, if we were uh, just thinking of ourselves, we would, we would say, well, these are my strengths and this is who I am, and you need to support that, versus thinking about how might I adapt my skills in order to be in the service of the many um, uh, and, and, and get outside of myself. And so um, it doesn't surprise me at all that someone who runs a nonprofit, even though they're a pioneer connector, uh, it has the ability to do that mm -hmm. and the capacity to do it and actually thinks about doing it right. whole nother thing Yes, it is. Uh, I, I am a very generous person, but I always I don't always think about mm -hmm. doing the things once it's pointed out It's like oh, yeah, of course um, And so there's there's a couple parts to that equation uh, But the fact that she even thought about it mm -hmm. and then executed is, is, a, is a great thing um, when we when we get out of ourselves we get out of our own tendencies also. Mm -hmm. And it uh, has an opportunity for us to grow. And just because someone is a blank, is X, doesn't mean they can't have attributes of Y, Z, and, and Absolutely. You know, et cetera. And so that, that's the other thing to be clear on. The purpose of that, uh, that test uh, and that uh, insightful way of looking at yourself, like, Enneagrams or Myers-Briggs or DISC or any of these is not to pigeonhole you, but to look at who you are, become mm -hmm. more self-aware, and then allow you to ask the curious question, yeah. is that all of who I am? Mm -hmm. Can I develop more things to be more useful to myself and to my fellows mm -hmm. and, and to the overall world? And I think that that's the key. And, and uh, it's a great example that she, that she did that. Yeah. Inspiring even. Yeah, you, you had hinted to me earlier that you wanted to talk about this concept of thinking less of yourself and, and having focus on others. And I had this phrase running through my head that I don't know where it originates, but I know I've heard it many times, but about it's not the process of thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Yes. 
The and definition it, of humility. Ah, humility. Okay, thank you. I knew there was. Yes. I, I, I knew there's an element of that that yep. I couldn't remember. Yep. But I I love that. And indeed, if you really contemplate what that's saying is, you know, false humility is. Oh, I'm not so good at that. You're mm -hmm. better at that. Oh. I, I'm going to defer to you. Because I'm trying to get you to do something. Right, yeah. Or or just trying to appear, I don't know, or trying to appear more humble. Yeah, it, yeah. When really the, the truth of the matter is you do have a skill in that area. You are confident in that arena and you could do that job very well, but you are feigning humility in order to defer to someone else. That's, right. you know, false humility. That's thinking less of yourself, whether it's realistic or just verbally. Right. But thinking of yourself less yes. is a whole other ball game, and it's like, hey, I know that you really appreciate this. I want to make sure that I have that available for you. I know that this is a struggle. I want to make sure that I help complement you in your work. It's it's just a very different way of thinking. Well, and, and and so you hit on a couple of really some of my favorite topics, and that, you know, thinking of myself less. I think about myself a lot. Yeah, I think we all do. <laughs> right, and so. Um, and, 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 but my best is when I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I heard someone recently uh, make a quote that said, um, uh, there's no technical difference between thinking only of ourselves and being miserable. Mm. I think there's so much wisdom in that statement. And I have to tell you, it is um, something I've been thinking about ever since I heard it. Mm -hmm. Because um, there's... There's very little, there's no growth coming from just thinking about yourself or thinking about your, your own self, accumulating creature comforts, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no, when you're not thinking about others and a greater good and a vision uh, and, and, a, and a, a set of goals and outcomes that you're passionate about, uh, you are miserable. Mm. It is when I start thinking about Folks who don't have a vision, don't have hope in their lives, I, I generally, in my experience, find that those folks think about themselves a lot mm. and they're not getting out of themselves and thinking about others. Mm. Well, I can give you just a, a very real example about getting stuck in thinking about yourself and how quickly that can turn you from content into miserable is about body image and weight. Mm. I have been struggling tremendously for the last number of years with weight gain. And when I start going down that mental path, thinking about myself, thinking how I look, thinking what I weigh, I can instantly go from a place where I might have had a very decent day to it going down the tubes because I'm so inward focused. And not to say we don't need to be contemplative about what we're eating and how we're moving and exercising all of those things. Of course we do. However, when we start just turning completely inward, that is the place where it's just a stew pot of nothing, nothing good. Yeah, and you're, you're touching on shame there a little bit. I'm not mm -hmm. going to go there today, but, um, you know, that's, uh, we are less useful to others if we're only thinking of ourselves. And, and, sure. and even if we're not doing it selfishly, even if there's a real concern in there somewhere that we haven't dealt with properly in our own thinking, um, and we need to do that at some point. But in the meantime, if you're dwelling mm -hmm. on something, again, there's nothing wrong with um, anger or shame or those things unless you're dwelling on it. Yeah. Let it happen and then get, and then move past it. Yeah. Move on. Uh, that is the diff difference because if you have those things, those negative feelings, those negative things, and you dwell, that's when you're far less useful to others. And mm -hmm. I would submit even useful to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So how do we begin to ask some curious questions if we find ourselves being too inward focused? I think this needs to get, you know, rerouted to a path where we're being very intentional to redirect our thought life to others. So if you're thinking about yourself and, and, and a lot of times when you're thinking about yourself, it's about, um, how come I don't have something that mm -hmm. somebody else has, right? So mm -hmm. it comes from a, a, a spirit of lack. Or, you know, I'm watching a news article and saying, oh my gosh, the world is going terrible this way or that. Or, mm -hmm. or we've always been like this and we'll never get out of it or something like that. Those are things you can't control. So mm -hmm. if you're thinking about things you can't, you don't have and things you can't control, uh, of course you're going to be in a place where... Uh, so... 
and and you know, and the other thing, and I was I was listening to something else o over the weekend where this person makes the point that um, not only that, but if you're thinking about if you're always thinking about the future or you're always thinking about the past, mm -hmm. then that think about what you do have, mm -hmm. right? gratitude. Think about what you can control, which is only yourself. Mm -hmm. I know that's harsh, <laughs> mm -hmm. but you, not even your kids, not your spouse, not the world spe specifically, mm -hmm. not what's going on overseas. Um, but think about yourself, think about what you do have, and think about what you can do right now. Yeah. Right. If we can do that, then that, I think, can get us out of it. Now, the first part of this and what your question really is, is um, how do I break the cycle? So mm -hmm. you have to be aware that you're in the cycle first. Yes. And, and I do this all the time. I'm in the middle of something. I'm going, what am I thinking? What am I doing? And how long have I been here? Mm, right. And so, so <laughs> well, so you have to realize that you're in that, mm -hmm. first of all. And, and there's some mm -hmm. signs for that. You know, when's the last time I thought about someone else for, you know, mm -hmm. more than a minute? What, 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 you know, am I happy right now? Am I not? Am I miserable? And, and if I'm miserable, uh, how much am I thinking about things outside of myself? Mm -hmm. So, so first of all is realizing that you're doing it um, and then and looking at the signs for that, which are personal to you. And then second of all, what can I do to think about what I do have uh, what can I do myself in this moment uh, to try to make things just a little bit better? I mean, we're not going to change the world as, a, as an individual, but we can tilt the world one way or the other. We can influence in some small way, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one way or the other. And, and that's, I think, got to be the goal. Because if the goal is changing the world, mm -hmm. if the goal is that everybody else thinks like I do, which is a suspect goal, but, right. but let's just say that is for a moment. You know, I'm not going to do that. Mm. Let's just be honest and, 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 and very clear about that. I'm not going to do that. But if I can influence in some positive way for the greater good for as many people as possible, isn't that the goal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I want to touch on something and not get too far down this path, but I think it needs to be said and it's been very present in so many of my conversations as of late which is the phrase, don't believe everything you think. And mm. that specific to when you start dwelling on the negative aspects of yourself or the negative self-talk and how quickly that can become all-consuming. And again, I am not going to pretend I am a counselor. That is not the intention of this podcast. And please, 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 if there's something that touches you in a way that compels you to, to need to have more information, go seek out a trained professional in this regard. But I will say I was at a funeral a week ago and it was a the person had died by suicide mm. and it was probably the most powerful funeral I have ever attended in my life and it was direct and they were not skirting around the issue and there was so much conversation around a in not not believing the voices that are keeping you fixated on the negative thoughts but b being willing to take that really brave next step is ask for help, mm -hmm. call out, mm -hmm. get a lifeline of some, of some regard, mm -hmm. in some regard. And then for those people that maybe aren't struggling in, the, in that mental health crises, to be aware, to look around at others and to say, how can I help someone that maybe is going through that really rough time? And as we have touched on in other podcasts, you know, this holiday season, we see the sharpest increases in mental health emergencies of any time of the year. And so I think it's very poignant as we are just speaking specifically about being aware of others, getting out of our own heads and looking how we can fulfill the needs of others. I think all of these really kind of convalesce in, in a beautiful place. Yeah, and, uh, and, I, and what you're saying is very serious. And, and, and while I would recommend highly that you're, you're looking around uh, to serve people pizza, mm -hmm. like your executive director, all the time. And that means sometimes, and we talked about this in a, uh, two podcasts ago, about looking for that person who's isolating, mm -hmm. looking for that person who's not acting like themselves, right. looking for that person who's clearly struggling, who's lashing out, 
um, responding in kindness to somebody who's lashing out at you, mm -hmm. even if it's another driver during the holiday season, and realizing that that may be a cry for help that they don't even realize themselves as a cry right. for help. Right. Uh, and helping that person in some way, not as a psychiatrist, not as a psychologist, not as a trained professional, but just to say, hi, I, you know, I'm old enough now. It's not, this has nothing to do with whether I'm, I'm a great person or not. It has more to do with the fact that I'm just old. There are people that come up to me now and say, you know, um, you may not realize this, but you said something at one point that was mm -hmm. really encouraging to mm -hmm. me, that really made a difference in my day or life. And, you know, quite frankly, I, nine times out of 10, I don't remember uh, the situation, but you never know what right. kind of positive influence you can have on someone just by a, a positive word, mm -hmm. acknowledgement. Yep. You and I both worked with the homeless. Sometimes just looking and saying hello and looking them in the eye right. is a big deal because yeah. a lot of people don't. And so um, you never know how much that positive little thing can do. And by the way, that only happens when you're not thinking of yourself. Mm -hmm. So you said something a few minutes ago that I think is maybe a key for us to park on for a moment and to figure out some questions around. Of how do you know when you're stuck kind of mm -hmm. in that inward space of thinking of yourselves and you know the barometer that you need to be aware of in order to get out of that place? And we've spoken many a time about getting out of the rut of a certain way of thinking. And so it is not always natural to think of others. And, and maybe perhaps it is unnatural to think of others because we know ourselves best we want to care for ourselves the best we we want what we want and so think and society supports that absolutely these days you know absolutely. you know be your own person and whatever way you are you know just be that and do that and support that and accumulate as much stuff as you can for that purpose mm -hmm. so there has to be that exercise of really trying to determine is this best for me and or is this best for those around me? And, mm -hmm. and how am I going to navigate the decisions moving forward? One, one of the places that I'm stuck in a little bit is I serve on a board and the board meetings are very, very frustrating to me. I feel like they're not accomplishing much. I feel like it's a waste of time. I want to be careful that I, <laughs> I don't know who listens to this podcast. I am going to have some hopefully very productive conversations about this in the very near future. But when I start thinking about me, I don't like it. I don't enjoy this <laughs> I time. Don't like I don't I love that. There, I don't like it. There's some key repeat phrases in there, and it starts with I, right? And, and so the question then has to become, well, what can I do to alter the situation? Right. Or, you know, how, how am I thinking of others in this? Because I know my absence would be felt if I just bail because I don't like it. And so how do I change the narrative for myself and how do I become more self-aware and, and find satisfaction in serving others? There's so much there. So let's start with the basic three that we just talked about and see where that goes. Okay. So one, is this something I can control? Mm. Two, is this something I have or am I thinking more of a position of lack? Sounds like there may be a lack of influence which is playing in here somewhere. Mm. And then am I being future and past focused versus present focused? Mm. So what can I do right now, given the vast things that I have and be grateful for? Yep. And how can I influence this knowing that I cannot control it? Mm. A, because it involves other human beings. Yep. B, because I'm not the head of this organization, yep. even if I pretended to be. And even if I were the head of this organization, I'm not controlling it. I'm yeah. influencing it. I may have more of an influence as that of the organization, but I don't control it. Yeah, that's a good point. Key influ key distinction. Mm -hmm. And so, what can what can I do in this moment with what I have uh, to influence this situation into a better result? I I think you do have to ask the clarifying question: What is it about me? that is not influencing this properly and what is it about me and my beliefs and my values and the way I'm thinking about this that is wrong because there's two sides to everything certainly so there these board meetings might be the most productive things in the world and that organization is doing everything that it's supposed to be doing right now and it's accomplishing exactly what we want you just don't like it 
Hmm. We sometimes have to ask those questions, yeah. right? And so maybe your influence on the board might be very important. It might be that you're there to kind of get them from going off the cliff in a certain direction, but you're still only going to be keeping them away from the cliff, mm. even though you don't like the direction at all. Mm. Is that a valuable thing for you in your life? Right. Yeah. Do you want to continue to put up with that? Yeah. Right. So I think we start there. Mm. Are those some useful questions? They are. They are. And I, I think the, the first one is probably the most telling is, is my perspective correct? Mm -hmm. I think that is a question that you can use in just about any circumstance because when you're feeling unhappy, unfulfilled, unsatisfied, all of the unwords, is your perspective correct? You, I'll, I'll take something else that I heard just this morning and apply it to this. Okay. All perspectives are wrong. Some are useful. Ooh, so I by, sit on that one. By definition, the perspective is not 100% right. I see what you're saying. Okay. okay. So it's wrong a little bit mm -hmm. or a lot. Yeah. So all perspectives, the, the, the quote, I, it was an engineering quote actually, about modeling versus practical experimenting. Mm. And there's neither one that's wrong or right. It's just that there tends to be two camps. And unfortunately, the people who do the modeling, they call it digital twins now. I'm old. So the people who are the modelers, often don't talk to the people who are uh, the practitioners because mm -hmm. they've developed this thing of animosity uh, of uh, my way's right, your way's right, versus, I, in my humble opinion, the, the best use is for the, the practitioners to talk to the modelers every once in a while and kind of converge for a little bit and then diverge necessarily uh, with their own thinking and then come back again and do this versus somebody coming off with a model and just going all the way down the path, mm. which is going to be wrong by definition um, s to some degree. Mm. And the practitioners who need help from the modelers if they would take it in helping churn some ideas into their practice. And so anyway, the quote was actually, all models are wrong, some are useful. Hmm. So when you said perspectives, it got me thinking, yeah. all perspectives are wrong to some degree yeah. or other, some are useful. Yeah. Right. And so and I, I think I think it applies. Yeah. We believe what we believe so vehemently that Sometimes. it is m much of the time, I would think that it's hard for us to conceive of someone else's vision or perspective being as valid or more valid than our own. Hmm. And, and I think about the I, we may have even said this on the podcast, you know, many an episode ago, but thinking about somebody who is colorblind. And all of the years that they've experienced somebody saying, this is pink, this is blue, this is green, they see something, but maybe it's not the th same color saturation or the same in indicator that we see in the non-colorblind world. But you can't convince somebody that, you know, what they see is not what they see. That's right. Until, you know, the invention, and I'm sure this has to do with how, how the color blindness is in, in any particular person if this would work, but you know those glasses, yep. those color correction glasses, yep. Yep. and you've probably seen those videos on, on some sort of a social media feed. Mm -hmm. Somebody puts it on and they're just weeping, mm -hmm. weeping, not realizing how much had gone unseen. Mm -hmm. And so I think in the gra grand scheme of things in this conversation, it really is how do we find those glasses to put on to correct our vision so that we see more fully the things around us, to experience more fully the things around us, to get out of our own head, to get out of our own perception, and to truly see. So much in that, and I'll tell you, one of the secrets to that is to take our own glasses off first. Mm. And so, um, the analogy doesn't hold here with the color blindness, but we each have our own pair of glasses. Mm -hmm. We each have our own lens in which we look at the world. Um, and the reality of the world is different than what we see to some degree. Yep. We, we are never 100% right yeah. because we're bringing our own filters and lenses. Mm -hmm. And if we can take our own glasses off and put somebody else's glasses on for a moment, uh, even just a little bit for the purposes of just being more useful in that situation or in that relationship or that goal that you mutually are trying to get to, um, then, you know, we might have an easier time of it. Hmm. All right. So we'll leave you with a contemplation about what are you seeing through? What are the glasses that you have on your own face? 
what are the glasses that you could put on with people around you and ultimately is there some vision correction I suppose that you can do to help see the needs of others to get out of yourself and to be an impact in the world around you. So we'll we'll catch up next week and appreciate your time and attention. Take care.